After framing an architectural plan of a building, structural planning is done by deciding the position and orientation of columns, followed by positioning of beams, spanning of slabs, and finally selecting the proper type of footing. Overall, the basic principle of deciding the layout of these components is the transfer of loads from the superstructure to the foundation along the shortest possible path. In this lecture, I am going to discuss how to decide the position and orientation of columns in a building structure. Before proceeding further, I would like to thank the civil field trainers for sponsoring this video, whose aim is to train 10,000 civil engineering students. More about them in the later part of this video. To decide the position of columns, we have some guiding principles for the same. It should always be preferred to locate the columns at or near the corners of a building and at the points where the beams or walls intersect because the basic function of columns is to support the beams which in turn support the walls. The projection of columns outside the walls should be avoided because this not only results in poor aesthetics but also leads to the loss of floor space. Therefore, whenever possible, the depth of the column should be contained within the plane of the wall, but a minimum column depth of 200 mm should always be maintained as per IS code. Large center to center distances between columns should be avoided in order to eliminate the need for a wider cross section of the columns. Now, let's discuss the orientation of columns. Usually, the columns which we provide in a building structure have a rectangular cross section. For effective load transfer, the width of these columns is to be kept not less than the width of the supported beams. But in some cases where the situation demands a greater cross section of the column to get the desired load carrying capacity, since the width of the column is restricted, the required cross section is achieved by increasing the depth of the column. This creates a problem when orienting the columns and to avoid which following points should be noted. The column should be oriented in a way that the depth that is shorter side of the column is perpendicular to the major axis of bending. In simple words, when a column is connected to beams, it is subjected to moments in addition to the actual load. That's why the shorter side of the column should be aligned perpendicular to the major axis of bending. This way, we can get a larger moment of inertia, which means a greater moment resisting capacity. To make it easy for you, Let's consider a beam column system with 9 columns numbered from C1 to C9 connected by 12 beams numbered from B1 to B12. The width of each beam is 230 mm and the size of each column is 230 mm into 300 mm. Before deciding the orientation of each column separately, let me tell you that if you want to learn many more in-depth civil engineering concepts with practical real-life project exposure, then civil field design consultants and trainers are offering their combo courses at a steep discount for the first 99 students only, in which you will get three complete courses at the price of one. You will learn to design the complete buildings in ETABS, complete foundation design in SAFE, including raft and pile cap design, and learn to create detailing drawings using RCDC. This certified pre-recorded course covers everything from drawing beam column layout in AutoCAD to creating beam column detailing drawing. The course fee is usually 3000 rupees, but for the first 99 students, the course is available for just 999 rupees only. Plus, you will be getting the bonus course on manual detailing and drawing, which includes slab, beam, column and footing detailing with e-tabs and excel sheets. You will be getting a lifetime access to all these courses along with certification, and the course is available in both Hindi and English. So hurry up and grab this offer by clicking the link in the description box of this video. To decide the orientation of column 1, we need to identify the major axis of bending for this column. As you can visualize from this picture, column 1 is connected by the beams B1 and B3 and the span of B1 is larger in comparison to B3. Hence the moment created by B1 will be greater than that of B3, which means the major axis of bending will be along the span of B1. Therefore, the depth of column 1, that is, its shorter side will be aligned perpendicular to the span of B1. Column 2 is connected by the beams B1, B2 and B4 and since B1 and B2 lie on the same axis but in opposite directions, the net moment on this axis will be generated by 4.5 minus 2.5 meter, that is 2 meter span, which is less than the span of B4, that is 3 meter. Hence, the major axis of bending will be along B4 and the depth of column 2 will be aligned perpendicular to the span of B4. For column 3, the major axis of bending will be along B5. Therefore, its depth will be kept perpendicular to B5. For column 4, 
The net moment along B3 and B8 will be generated by 3 meter minus 3 meter span since both the beams lie on the same axis but in opposite directions. Therefore, the major axis of bending will be along B6 and the depth of column 4 will be aligned perpendicular to the span of B6. Column 5 is connected by 4 beams that is B4, B6, B7 and B9. B6 and B7 lie on the same axis. Therefore, the net moment along B6 and B7 will be created by the span 4.5 minus 2.5 meter that is 2 meter along B6. The B4 and B9 lie on the same axis and the net moment along these two beams will be created by 3 minus 3 meter that is 0 meter span. Therefore, the major axis of bending will be along B6 and the depth of C5 is to be kept perpendicular to the span B6. The column 6 is connected by the beams B5, B7 and B10. Since B5 and B10 have the same span that is 3 meter, the net moment created by these two spans will be 0. Therefore, the major axis of bending will be along the span of the beam B7 and the depth of C6 is to be kept perpendicular to the span B7. The similar procedure is followed for other columns as well.